All right, so at this point, I've got Android Studio installed, I've got Git installed, I've installed my access token so the Android Studio can access my repositories. Um, and what do we do last? Oh, I accepted the assignment. So that took me here. So now I've got the Kotlin starter code. I've got Android Studio all ready to go. The next step is to get this starter code, which currently lives on github.com, and get a copy of it onto my local machine and import it into Android Studio so that I can start exploring it and seeing what it does and making the changes that I'll need to make to complete the MP0 checkpoint. So let's do that together. Um, okay, so when you accepted the GitHub Classroom ass uh, assignment, you ended up here. If you close this tab, you need to find your way back here. Um, and I've also got Android Studio open. So what I'm gonna do, the next process is called cloning the repository. This allows me to get a copy of the code that currently lives on github.com and to get a copy of it locally so that Android Studio can use it. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I click on the code button. I need to make sure that I'm using the HTTPS option. You do not want to use this with GitHub Desktop. You do not want to download a zip. These are both options that will cause you to potentially end up with a misconfigured repository. So just don't do this. There's probably a way to get this to work with GitHub Desktop if you really know what you're doing. Um, but if you don't, just follow my instructions. Um, so I'm going to use this link. I'm going to go back to Android Studio and I'm going to say git from uh, version control. I'm going to paste that link in here. It will ask me where I want to put this particular uh, repository because there's a directory that's going to be created on my computer. It's going to have the code in it that I'm cloning from GitHub. And you can potentially move this around, but I think the default's an okay place. So now I'm going to hit clone. And um, so now it's going to ask me if I trust the repository. The reason for this step is that uh, repositories like this one may include uh, code or programs that run to do various things within the repository. And you want to make sure that those are going to run safely on your machine. In this case, the answer is uh, please trust us. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be hard to do the MP. So I'm going to hit trust project. Um, so now it's loading things up. Now, if I look down here in the in the bottom, in this part of Android Studio, I'll see that there are things that are happening. One of the things that can be confusing about Android Studio that I just want to note is that Android Studio is frequently busy doing things. And until it's done doing things, even though it might look ready, it's not really ready and some things won't work. Um, so, you know, always it, it, it pays to sort of start to notice that area down here uh, in the bottom sort of rightish middle where you'll see these messages because if you see messages that are like Gradle build or whatever, what it means is that Android Studio is in the process of potentially downloading libraries from somewhere or taking steps that are required to get your uh, project set up properly. And until that completes, some of the things that we're gonna try to do together might not work perfectly. Um, and this can take a little while. So I've been working on this project on this machine, which means that I have access to a lot of the libraries, a lot of the other things that we're going to need. They're already downloaded on my machine. I didn't have to uh, take that step. You probably do. And so you may need to wait here for a few minutes for that to finish before we move on. Okay. So uh, when we open up a new project, it opens up the readme. This indicates that we're in the Kotlin starter code for the, the machine project. That's good. That's where we want to be. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Over here on the left, um, by default, Android opens up projects in what's called the Android view over here. I don't like that. I'm gonna use the project view and I'm gonna use that in pretty much all of the video tutorials that we create for the project. So that's my suggestion is to use this. Okay, so what are we looking at here? If you've never used an integrated development environment or IDE, which is what Android Studio is, it is normal to be a little bit freaked out right now because there's a lot going on. Um, you know, modern software development using these type of tools is complicated. Um, there's a lot of things to pay attention to. There's a lot of buttons to push. You know, first of all, one of the things I'll say to anyone getting started with this is just be careful. Don't push random buttons because sometimes even when I'm using Android Studio, it's like I push the wrong button. It may take me 10 minutes to figure out how to get back to the way I wanted things to be. So this is, you know, a, 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 a just like, it, it, it's almost like sitting behind, you know, uh, sitting in the cockpit of a 747 or something like that. Like, don't just start pushing buttons. Right? Just try to be intentional about what you're doing and be careful about how you use this particular tool. Okay, so that's, that's one step. The other uh, thing to keep in mind is that 
we'll work on this together, right? There's really nothing you do here that is irreversible that we can't fix. Um, so, you know, please don't, you know, don't be too afraid. You know, we've been training you up on these small problems, writing these smaller pieces of code in a very, very controlled environment. And this is a big sort of graduation day into the much more complicated real world of, of, of software development. This is a tool that actual developers use. This is the tool that people use to build Android applications. If you have an Android device or an iPhone, the apps that are created on that device are built by people just like you using a tool just like this. This is how software creation is done. Um, and so getting comfortable with these tools is a really important part of being able to expand your creative potential within uh, the world of software. So super exciting, okay? But at the same time, I understand a little baffling. You know, it's like a lot of buttons, a lot of things to pay attention to. We'll go slow and we'll do one thing at a time and, and try to get a sense of what's going on. Okay, so the first question you might have is, where is the code, right? So uh, I assume there's some Kotlin code in here. And to, to find the code, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna go into the app directory, app source main Kotlin. And now you see a couple of directories where there is actual Kotlin code. One is called activities, another is called application, another is called models. We're gonna go through the code in here. I tried to give you code that is very, very well commented. So there's a lot of existing commentary in there that you may want to look at. Um, but we're gonna guide you through this over the remainder of you know, the checkpoints. Like the video tutorials are gonna walk through one thing after another, and by the time we're done, you'll understand a lot more of it than you do now. The other thing I wanna emphasize is that the code in here is Kotlin code that you should be prepared to understand. There are a few new ideas that I snuck in here because I love Kotlin and I think you do too and I wanted you to you know, see a few new things. So there's like a couple of new things because they're cool about Kotlin and they're appropriate to use here that kind of snuck into the project, but they shouldn't baffle you. They're just sort of straightforward extensions of some of the stuff that we've already talked about. And I think you'll notice where they are and hopefully appreciate them because Kotlin's super cool. Um, so anyway, but a lot of this is Kotlin code. I would say 98% of it is Kotlin code that you should be prepared to understand. There's more of it. It's more distributed. It's in different files. The interactions between things are gonna be a little more complicated, but there's nothing in here that you're not prepared to understand. We're just gonna to have to work through it more slowly, piece by piece, and we will. Okay, so let me, uh, the other important thing I wanna show you is, is up here. So this is called the run configuration. And in here, uh, what, what's in here are things that you can do uh, with your project. One of them is grade, which may interest you. There's another one called test. Uh, but the two that I want, uh, and so we'll go through these together. One of these is run the app. Now, this is another case where I have an emulator already configured. The first time you do this, you will probably need to configure an emulator unless you've already done that as part of setting up Android Studio. So what this does is it runs the app in its current state on an emulated Android device, which is pretty cool, actually. Um, maybe a little bit slow. If you have your own Android phone, you can actually hook it up and run it on a real device, which can be faster. Um, but let's see what happens when I run the app and get a sense of what it does out of the box. Okay, now this might be a little confusing, uh, but if I zoom out, what I can see is that this is a map of the Champaign-Urbana area. And what's shown on here are favorite places in the area as, as contributed by a bunch of course staff and also some faculty in the department, uh, which is kind of neat. Now, I can kind of do some normal mappy things with this map. I can scroll around, I can zoom in and out. There are some things that you might notice aren't working uh, perfectly yet. So if I click on this, I see an empty pop-up dialogue. That's a little weird. Um, and then uh, if I go up here and try to use the search bar, uh, nothing happens. So there are some problems with this app that we're going to solve, but this is the starting point, right? So this is the app that we're gonna to continue to develop and extend and improve over the course of the remaining checkpoints. And we'll have a ton of fun doing it and we'll learn a lot about sort of how apps work along the way. Okay, so that's one thing I can do. I'm gonna close my emulator and, and put that away. I have, a couple, I have a format task. Now what this does is it runs um, a formatter across all the code in the project. And this can be really helpful. Sometimes, you know, when we're writing code, it's a little sloppy and maybe we make a few mistakes here and there in terms of our formatting. This format task will allow us to take care of that, right? So it just cleans everything up. 
Um, there's also a lint task. Now the difference is that the lint task runs the formatter, but it also, I might actually take out the format task, so that might be gone by the time you get the starter code. The lint task runs the formatter, but then it also runs a couple of uh, things that check the format of your code. We're also gonna use a tool called detect that is essentially kind of the equivalent of check style, which we use in Java for Kotlin. It checks certain things about code quality, and there'll be a few points on every checkpoint for making sure that detect is happy and isn't complaining about anything. So it's kind of similar to what we do normally in the homework with, with another tool called KTLint, which we're also using, uh, but we use detect on the MP. It's able to detect some more sophisticated aspects of code quality. So they're kind of, kind of cool. All right, so there is a test suite that comes along with the starter code because we're already working on MP0. I'm gonna go ahead and run that, see what happens. Now, big caveat at this point, which is that if you are on a slow internet connection or even just like a normal internet connection, that test process may appear to hang. When you run test MP0, it may sit there and be look like it's thinking, 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 nothing may be happening. What's happening, unfortunately, uh, behind the scenes without like a nice progress dialogue or anything is that there is a large download that has to happen the first time that you run the test suites. So my suggestion is, first of all, don't expect them to complete that quickly uh, the first time. It will probably take a few minutes, even on a normal internet connection. I've already got the file, so it's not being downloaded again. That's why it completes so quickly. And as soon as you get access to that library, it'll complete quickly for you as well. So it's only a one-time thing. If you're in certain parts of the world, maybe over a VPN, or you have a particularly slow connection, you may need to run this for a few hours or overnight. What you don't want to do is stop it because then it has to start all over again, right? So just be prepared for a little bit of a delay here, potentially a long delay if you're on a slow internet connection. Make sure your machine is plugged in. You know, if, if you try this and it's really taking a while, you may need to just let it run overnight once it will complete at some point. Like everyone, we've had people complete previous MPs that have used this tool from all over the world. It works. It just may take a little while. So you have to be patient with it. That's another thing about just sort of, particularly when you're getting things set up, being patient with Android Studio and, and letting it sort of finish some of these tasks. A lot of these are just one-time things. Once you have the libraries for the project, once you have these tools you know, already available on your local machine, then everything's super fast because they're not being downloaded every time, they're just downloaded once. Okay. Um, last thing let's talk about is the grade task, since I assume this will interest some of you. What this does is it runs the auto grader on your computer and produces an estimate of your current score. I wanna be very careful to be clear about this. This does not submit your project. We will talk about how to do that in a later video. All this does is allow you to estimate how you're doing on the project based on the code that's currently in your repository. So running the grade task does not submit your MP. If you only run the grade task, and don't go through the submission process, which we'll talk about, you won't earn any points. Okay, now if I run this, the other thing that's gonna happen is it's going to fail. Now, first of all, let me go back and make another comment. When you are working on the MP, it's much more valuable to run the test suites, right? Your workflow should be run the test suites, understand what's failing, make some changes to your code, run the test suites again. We'll talk about this more when we talk a little bit more about how to approach these checkpoints, but that should be your workflow. The grade task is really only there for you to use at the end to kind of make sure that everything came out the way that you wanted. Now, I ran the grade task and you'll notice that it seems like something went wrong because there's a lot of red text here. One thing to keep in mind when you run these run configurations is that sometimes, depending on where I'm clicking over here on the left, I see more or less useful information. So if I just click on app prepare for grading, it just says it failed. Usually what I want to do is click at the top here. That shows me all the output from the different steps that were run when this particular run configuration was executed, and that'll allow me to see what's happening. Now, you know, sometimes you have to read these a little more carefully than you might be used to reading things, right? So it says what went wrong, and the error message here is invalid number of contributors in the identification file. So this is the last thing we're going to do together is this, uh, in this screencast is enter our ID into this ID.txt. So we need a way to identify you when you submit your code. Um, so when you push your code, we'll talk about how to do this um, in a later video. When you submit your code, we need a way to figure out who, who it is. Um, and the way that we do this is we give you an ID. And 
I'm over here. Let me go to the, the Kotlin version. They're the same. Um, all right, so I'm on a Kotlin lesson about this. And you'll see down here, here is my I MP ID. Now, this is not my actual MP ID. Um, I wouldn't share that in a public um, uh, a public uh, uh, video. Uh, I'm going to put this into this file called id.txt that is in the root of the project. Um, now, once I have this, let me run the gray task again, because that's what the gray task was complaining about. It's warning me, hey, you don't have, you know, uh, you, you don't have id.txt, right? It, there's, there's no ID in there. Okay, so now when I run it, what am I going to see? I'm going to see that, oh, good, I actually earned points on the MP. I have, I have a 10 out of 100, and the reason is that there are no detect errors that have been detected yet. The code that we gave you to start with is clean. It doesn't work properly. There's a couple of things that we're going to need to fix. We'll talk about how to do that in the next lesson, but it comes with no sort of detect errors out of the box. And so you have a 10 out of 100. Now there's more commentary here that we'll talk about what to do with next time, um, which essentially says that you should commit your changes right away, which means saving the state of the repository so that you make sure that you sort of, anytime something good happens with your code, you wanna make sure that you save it in a way that you can come back to later if you need to. We'll talk about how to do that in one of the later videos. Okay. so. What we did is we imported, in this video, we imported the code into Android Studio. Um, we looked around a little bit. We kind of found where the code was hanging out, some of the stuff that we'll need to work with. We'll talk about more about what to do with this next time. Um, we looked through some of the run configurations that were provided as part of the project, and we took our ID and we put it into the right place in id.txt to allow it to identify us so that we can earn credit for uh, the work that we do on the checkpoint. Okay, so we're off to a great start.